Hey, have a wonderful day there. 495 in the mobile. Charlie Echo 01 on the ground plane. Hello, good morning across the pond, Charlie Echo 01. We're going to QSY on 375. 375 QSY. Hello there, Chaz. Are you talking to me or someone else? I'm talking to you, actually. This is like the morning, Kate. We didn't hear it because you were still trying to go to 375, mate. So I'll say hello. <laughs> hey, we got you there, Chaz. And we got some, um, some mobile stations coming in from Canada. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, it's going to be good today. Um, what are you hearing on your side? Yeah, I don't know why, maybe it's propagation. Yeah, I just said there's um there's a mobile station uh, coming in from Canada, so that it seems like it might open up today. Got you there, 495, uh, Newfoundland, Canada, a uh, Charlie Echo 01, Operator Kate. Roger, 01, Operator Kate. Uh, operator here is Rick, Romeo, India, Charlie Kilo, Roger. Hey, we got you there, Rick, 100%, a Super Radio uh, 5 and a signal, I think it's just below the 5, so really good to hear you guys in there again. It's been pretty lacking over the, the last few days there. Back to you. Yeah, Roger. Uh, I've been up here for a while. It seems like uh, things were pretty quiet for a few days. And uh, sometimes I had to get things done around the house. But uh, hopefully today we get a lot of DX in there. And, uh, like I said, it's just certain. Uh, you're sounding great coming across the pond for sure. Yeah, well, nice one there, Rick. And uh, yeah, we're on the ground plane. And we're rocking this old school Washington, so I'm glad it's still getting out there um, across the pond. Are you um, are you on a ground plane as well? Is that right? Uh, no, I'm just running a magnum out of my uh, Equinox. Uh, I got a, a, a SR-10 that's going to be uh, running out of the Equinox. Uh, and then I've got a Charlie Echo 01 and a Charlie Echo 02. Holy smoke. So are you mobile? Because I'm sure I heard you earlier on. I'm not too sure. Um, are you in the mobile station there, Rick? Roger, I'm in a mobile station. Like I said, I'm running an RTI 2970 out of my car with a magnet mount antenna, Roger. Well, conditions have got to be good uh, to catch you in, in the mobile there. I was talking to a, a friend um, and he's down on the coast. I'm not too sure if he's still on the side um, or not. Maybe he can hear you there, uh, Rick. I'll just take a standby and see if, um, see if he's still out there. Hello, Chaz. Are you still out there on the side? I think he's talking his pot <laughs> Ah, you heard that? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he doesn't. He doesn't do roast dinners, which uh, it seems pretty shocking to me. But I think he's left the frequency. 
And like you say, he's, he's having his pot noodle maybe. But you're making an awesome trip there, um, Rick. Really good to hear you coming out of the mobile. Back to you. Yeah, well, all the best there, Rick, and uh, you can find me on the YouTube, uh, Charlie Echo 01 on the YouTube there, Rick. I hope you find it. Seven Freeze from Charlie Echo 01. Six Division Needle Bender Zero One. You trying to check in, Kate? <laughs> yeah, I can just about hear um, the guy in England doing the check-ins there. World Radio, I think. Yeah, it's a Needle Bender Six Nine Three. World Radio Needle Bender Six Nine Three. I'm doing check-ins over here in Florida, also. Oh right, well check me in then. That would be cool. Um, yeah, Needle Bender Zero One, uh, Canterbury. Got you at number eight. Oh, super. And is this Dennis? I, I always get your name wrong, so I'm really hoping it is you, Dennis. Back to you. No, you got it right that time. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, I'm glad about that, Dennis. And, um, yeah, we like the new workshop. It's, it's looking really cool. Oh yeah, I got a lot of stuff in here now. I got a <laughs> lot going on in here. And I got the radio room and a little 10 by 10 area in here and they're working out great. Yeah, well, you, you've done an awesome job on that. I'd like to have that workshop. It looks pretty cool. So, uh, are you on the ground plane today there, uh, Dennis? Yes, I am. I'm on the ground plane. I got a better signal on that than I do on the beam. Wow, you peaked to nine on the ground plane. Uh, we're on the Washington today, so I hope I'm on frequency. Um, I was trying to tune to some top stations earlier on, um, but we got you really clear, uh, Dennis. Back to you. Roger that. And I got another wave coming through, um, so it dropped your signal down to about a five, but I had you between seven and nine. Oh, brilliant. Okay, well that is brilliant and it's it's good to hear the skip sort of coming back in a little bit again there, uh, Dennis. Haven't heard you for a long time actually, uh, especially on the ground plane. So yeah, good luck with your check-ins. Uh, Needlebender01, Kate in Canterbury. Roger that, Kate. Seven threes to you, World Radio Needlebender693. I'll be back on the side and take a check-in. World Radio 693, World Radio 4090, call for check in. Hello across the pond. Charlie Echo 01, we're on the ground plane. Hey Charlie Echo, I'll see you driving on the ground plane at the top of the day over there. I don't know what time it is, but it's uh, 10 a.m. in the morning over here in Central Florida. Hey, we got you there in Central Florida, and it's just gone 3 o'clock in the afternoon over here in England, and we're in the very southeast of England. Charlie Echo zero one, operator Kate. Uh, yeah, Charlie Echo zero one on the ground plane at three o'clock over there. How about that? It's already in the afternoon. Hey, we have a good copy over here, southeast corner, stay side. Uh, keep it on back one more time. <laughs> yeah, we got you there. Three five one. And uh, you're peeking up to the nine, and uh, we're on the old school Washington today. So I'm really pleased that you heard me. Uh, back to you. Thank you. Uh, we're standing good over here. I'm glad I can work 
Hey, thanks very much there. 351 in Florida, Charlie Echo 01, Kate in Canterbury. Hello, John, 151, the mower junkie, Charlie Echo 01. Well, good morning to you, Kate, or should I say good afternoon to you, Kate? Or five one, or turning to you. I think it's just as good, but uh, oh, the old one, everybody sounded better on the old radios. <laughs> hey, absolutely, and thanks for sending the picture over of the um, of your mowers. They, they look really cool lined up in a row. A real vintage beast, sir, John. Back to you. Well, thank you very much. Oh, I had a grand old time out there playing with all three of those. I mowed half of my backyard with one, half of the backyard with another, and then the front yard with the third one. I had all three of them out stretching their legs. Yeah, I brought them all out, started them all up, let them run for a few minutes to get them warmed up, and then, yeah, that's what I did. Change the oil on all of them. Yeah, I'm all ready. They're all ready for the springtime. They're uh, good to go. <laughs> hey, that's real cool. And, uh, yeah, on, on Monday uh, last week, uh, on the 1st, we went to um, an auto jumble, and we got a really old um, motor, well, a motorbike uh, engine, um, and it's the uh, the matchless, and it's a 500. So we were quite lucky to get that. Uh, John, back to you. Copy that. Yeah, matchless. E, that's a rare unit right there. Those are really hard to come by. Does he have a bike yet in mind to put that on? <laughs> well, we we were thinking kind of either a chop or some sort of trial bike, I reckon. But um, yeah, we couldn't believe it. It's um, well, it's the 500 model, uh, single. And it weighs <laughs> it weighs a ton, but um, yeah, we got it for um, about two hundred and fifty pounds, which is not a lot. So yeah, we we were quite lucky there. Wow, that's really a good price on that. Uh, does it need to be rebuilt or is it ready to go? Not too sure. Um, we we kind of left it to one side. We got it in the workshop out of the back of my car, and we kind of um, turned it over so it's free and it's kind of got compression but i think uh with these old things you've got to strip them right down and and check out see what's going on inside there john back to you oh absolutely yeah yeah it's definitely worth taking it apart why take the chance yeah he knows what he's doing he can pull that thing apart in no time i'm sure and uh, make sure all the internals are good before before putting fire to it <laughs> Hey, absolutely. I think he was going to kind of um, make a stand for it and um, just have it fired up. Maybe not in the house, but <laughs> maybe just have it on a stand just for now. Get it running. Um, it's, a, it's a real old, um, quite a rare one. I'll have to send you a picture of it. Yeah, please do. Do you have any idea what year that engine is? Uh, I think it's 1952, and um, I think the magneto goes behind the engine. And I think you know, all these engines that I deal with are like that. The magneto is buried inside of them. Uh, mm. Yeah, I wish they would put it somewhere else too, but oh, they are <clears> what they are. Sometimes we just got to uh, go through a lot of work to make minor changes. <laughs> Hey, absolutely. I'll tell you what, it'll, it'll be pretty cool to fire it up um, like with no exhaust on. You have some flames coming out of there, I reckon. But um, yeah, we keep you posted on that one. I did actually run a, uh, some videos when we were going around the, um, the auto jumble, but I kind of haven't done anything with it yet. So I might, um, I might put it up and so you can see uh, what it was like. We just about dodged the rain, so um, and we got the, the engine back in the car. Uh, before it tipped it down again, so we were quite lucky that day. Good 
Copy that, yeah. You end up with that streak of water up your back. Yeah, I'm familiar <laughs> with that. Okay, hang in there one second. I got a QSK in there. QSK, go ahead, bring it in. John and uh, yeah we could hear Paul I'm not too sure about whereabouts in England he is but we could hear a voice pattern so yeah quite amazing Right, I got you. I got you there, John. Yeah, it's kind of a bit noisy on this one. I think if I was on the Washington, I'd really hear him quite well. But um, yeah, your signals dropped down as well, so it's it's really strange today. Back to you. Copy that. Yeah, he said he had a pretty good copy on you. He said he could hear you pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, seven freeze there, Paul. It is amazing to make any contact, to have any kind of conversation on 38. It's usually uh, full of a lot of craziness on that one. Yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, there's quite a few people on on the uh, the radio today. I can hear a lot of people in England. Um, so they could probably hear you there, John. If I take a standby, uh, put some calls out. Copy that. Who else is on this channel? Anybody else on the 370-151 in South Carolina? I'm Stan and Bryce. Yeah, I've just got you in the receive at the moment. Uh, nobody's QSK'd on my side. But um, yeah, absolutely amazing to catch you for this long, John. It, it's quite, um, well, it's absolutely awesome. Especially on this old um, Cobra 148. We're just giving it a bit of a run. And I might even put the, <laughs> I might even put the Washington back on because it's got a better receive, to be honest. Too. Yeah. That 148 sounds good, but the watch just sounds a lot better. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'll tell you what, um, hang tight for a minute. I'm going to switch it over and, and we can really see um, the change in the signal and, and everything. So um, I'll just take a standby. I'll be, I'll be right back. Copy that. I'll be here. South Carolina. Much better this radio. Amazing. 
poor old cobra. <laughs> I tell you what, there's no comparison. No comparison. Uh, this Washington is absolutely awesome. You're peaking a nine on this one. And uh, on the other one, you were barely me moving the needle at some time. So, yeah, it's definitely, um, it needs a bit of a look at, I reckon. Yeah. yeah, it might need a little bit of a uh, realignment inside mm. of that thing. And uh, get, it, get that receiver back to uh, high quality again. Because we all know what those 148s are capable of. Yeah, that's it. I did send it away to Nick, and he put, um, I think it's called a PLL board in. And uh, it does obviously does the zeros and, and bits and bobs like that. But, um, yeah, it's just not got the receive that this one has. Uh, this this uh, Washington's absolutely awesome. Oh, I know. I've had a lot of the Washingtons over the years, and... Yeah, they're really, really hard to beat on the receiver, especially for how quiet the noise level is on those radios. Uh, yeah, on my list of favorites, the Washington will always be at the top of it. Yeah, that's it. I, I think people are getting a bit bored of the videos, but um, all the other radios, they just don't um, cut the mustard, really. <laughs> uh, we got the. I might dig out the um, uh, the Madison. Uh, that's upstairs. That needs. Um, well, having a bit of power run through it. So we might get that one out next, John, and, and give it a bit of a whirl. Well, that's another one, too. That's a fantastic radio. The Madisons have a, uh, a really good receiver. Uh, th that should actually beat out the Washington. Yeah, I think it, it kind of did. And then it has, um, well, they're obviously pretty old radios. So I think uh, sometimes some of the cats go and then it kind of lets it down a little bit. I'm not too sure if that one went wrong, actually, and that's why I put it away. But um, that's it, you know, it's hit and miss, really. <laughs> Copy, Copy that. that on the cat. I have an old uh, Super Scope radio that was made by Moran Electronics. And that radio, it was awesome. But the only problem is the capacitors in it are so dried out that I have to put power to it That's pretty cool, and uh, I think um, I think do anything you need to recap um, these old um, these old radios. Really, I think you just need to sort of bite the bullet. I know it costs a lot of money, but um, yeah, you're just going to end up toing and throwing, which I found um, uh, with some of these old radios. They they keep getting sent back to uh, Mr. Nick. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a, a bit of a catch twenty two there, John. Oh yeah, yeah, I know it. We have that love for the old radios, but those old radios require... Those old radios require a lot of love. <laughs> That's it. I reckon if I if I sold the whole shebang, I could, well, I could buy some top motorbikes. So, um, yeah, don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, copy that, yeah. Oh, I, w I was saying that for a while, looking at my collection and thinking, <laughs> either stuff I could buy if I sold it all, but instead I sold most of it and paid bills. Yeah, that's not good. Um, yeah, I think, um, well, Mel, Mel's brother's coming over from um, from Australia. Uh, he lives in Perth, and he's coming over for a couple of weeks in, in June. And we're going to get the um, the other bike on the road, which is quite an old chop. Um, it's an XS650 uh, Yamaha. Um, I'll have to send you a picture of it. It's pretty cool. Um, it needs a new carb, so we're kind of saving up uh, to buy a new carb because they're pretty expensive now. They can get expensive. That's 650. Is that a one cylinder or a two cylinder? I can't remember now. Yeah, so it's a two cylinder. Um, it's a yeah, 650, um, made by Yamaha. But it kind of it's um, it's highly modified, so it doesn't it doesn't look like a Jap engine at all now. It kind of looks like an old English one. Copy that. Yeah, and as you were telling me that it was a two cylinder, I remember. 
describe as what the Yamaha one was that I was thinking of was the uh, the 500, and it was called a, a thumper, which was a single. Yeah, the 650. Oh yeah, I know. I remember that one now. Lots of people, even here in the states, mm. like to convert those to choppers. Yeah, they um, well, they were well, they're highly sought after in this country, and and like you say in the states, um, to make uh, bobbers and chops and stuff. And um, yeah, Melv made um, some manifolds uh, that fits it, so you can run it on uh, one carburetta um, on the Amel uh, concentric. So um, yeah, they went pretty well. Oh, nice! Yeah, that should, that saves quite a bit, and they make the tuning a whole lot easier. Yeah, absolutely, because it had um, the standard carbs, I think they were um, like a, dam um, a diaphragm carb and they, if they get like a little tiny hole in, um, they can just fail, so <laughs> he ripped them off straight away and put some ammos on. Yeah, copy that, yeah, I have some, uh, on my old tractors, they have diaphragm style uh, fuel pumps, so yeah, I'm familiar with those diaphragms. Yes, they get a little crack or a hole, they're all dug, and if they get old, they get dry and hard, and they just don't work properly. <laughs> hey, that's it. It's an absolute nightmare trying to uh, trying to find out what's wrong with it as well. But, um, yeah, so that's going to be on the road. Um, that one needs an MOT, so uh, that's, yeah, that's not, that's why it got put away, because the old bikes, uh, they don't need any tax or MOT in this country. So uh, we try and stick to the old thumpers. Nice, very nice, yeah. Cheaper to put on the road, absolutely. So what's Mel going to get that up and running again so that him and his brother can go riding? Yeah, so, um, yeah, they, they're going to sort of take a trip out. He's lived over um, in Australia for uh, probably about 20-odd years now, maybe 30 years. So, um, yeah, they, he's coming back for a holiday uh, we're going to do some, I don't know, do some castles and stuff and yeah, just uh, go out around, around the old country pubs on the bikes. It'll be good fun. That's fantastic. That sounds like a really good time. I'm glad he's going to get some time to spend with his brother. <laughs> hey, I, I think you've got a QSK on the side there, John. Even I can hear them. <laughs> Go ahead. Who was that that was on the side? one to one on this one uh it doesn't go very far uh i currently have it tuned so i can go from uh channel 20 up to about channel 60. uh but anything over that 27605 uh the swr starts to climb and if i go below channel 20 it does the same it starts to climb again but it's got a pretty good spread so i'm, I'm happy with it yeah, absolutely. Um, blimey, I'll tell you what, you actually went over the nine then. And like you say, the um, the meter on this one is dead on. Uh, it's really, yeah, it's pretty good, I reckon. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the audio is absolutely massive. Um, really, really good audio from that radio, John. Well, thank you very much. You're doing a great job here, too. You're a solid eight over here. And uh, like I was saying earlier, the meter on this radio is a little stingy and uh, a little stiff. But you're doing a solid eight on it the whole time you're talking. Wow, that is cool. And yeah, we're using the Silver Eagle uh, with the radio. So I think I've got it about right. It depends um, if the signal's really good. And maybe it might be slightly overdriving, I don't know. I think I'm about two inches away, uh, so it doesn't bring in all the background noise, you know? No, that thing sounds fantastic. Usually I do not like the sound of D104s. Mm. Uh, to date, there's only two people that I think sound good on them. Uh, you're one of them, and uh, one of my locals here, uh, 127 John, <laughs> uh, he's the other one that uh, you guys are the only ones that have ever heard that actually sound good on a D104. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I can always hear John, but he's right in the background. And he, he always hears me word for word, and I can barely um, make out what he says. It's, it's quite strange considering, I think he's on a beam as well, um, I'm not too sure. 
uh, sometimes he goes out on his push bike so that would be interesting oh yeah john's a character over there yeah he's uh he's definitely one of my favorite locals for sure <laughs> yeah, he's on a uh, two element quad a uh, pdl2 yeah he's got a uh, one of the two element beams yeah, that's it. Um, and it's only like sometimes, I think I get him better out in the mobile, to be honest, but um, he always hears me, so he's definitely doing something right. But um, yeah, have you got um, have you got your ground plane rigged up? Can you, can you uh, switch it? Absolutely. Give me about uh, 30 seconds and I'll switch that over. Five one on the Mako V58. Going for you. Holy smokes! You peaked over the seven on the ground plane. So ground plane to ground plane. Are we running about 300 watts there, uh, John? Back to you. Well, I have copied that 300 watts, but on the ground plane, oh, you're down to about a five wow. on this one. This, is, this antenna does not have the ears of the beam. <laughs> the, uh, the beam can hear things, a lot of things that this antenna just can't. Yeah, that's it. And and now um, the audio is brilliant, but it's not as clean as, as it is on the beam. So, yeah, just a good test, to be honest. Yeah, just to see if it's working. And the propagation's uh, definitely there. Back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit tricky on this one, but I'll tell you what, the propagation's definitely there. And um, I think, um, like you said in one of your videos um, a few years ago now, if nobody's calling out, then there's no DX. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy, and everyone kind of goes quiet and stops calling. It's weird. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sometimes you don't even know there's good DX in there until you start calling out. You start calling out on this quiet channel, and before you know it, you're going to have to go to conversation. <laughs> Hey, that's it. And uh, yeah, like the other day uh, when I caught you on the 38, I thought, you know what? I don't normally talk on there, but there was nobody on there. Uh, normally I can hear people uh, from London coming in and they run a lot of power. So um, you don't stand any chance with them guys. But yeah, absolutely brilliant to catch you there, John. I better let you go. I don't want to take up uh, the, most of your Sunday there. Back to you. Copy that. I just put the beam back on. I did it really quick so I wouldn't lose anything you had to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like connected the beam back up. Oh, I had a great copy on you again. All right, Kate. Hey, enjoy the rest of your evening. And, uh, oh, I hope that it, that engine turns out well for Mel. All right, Kate, 73s to you. Hey, seven three said John, and I'll um I'll send you a, well I'll send you a picture over of the um of the engine. It's quite a good one. So um well say hello to Barbara from me, and uh, we'll catch you later, John. Seven threes from Charlie Echo zero one. Seventy threes. I look forward to seeing that picture. One five one South Carolina. I'll be standing by. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. It's all the hours, isn't it? That's yeah, it. That's it. <laughs> Cheers. Some nice cakes there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
on the little bike? Uh, 40 for the Harley. 40? It's cast, it's not plastic. How much you got on the vice? Uh, 70. What? Bad, yeah, all right. Good. The first one of the year. <laughs> I think so. The first of the first. Yeah, I've done a couple already. Yeah. Kenton yeah, up in London. Yeah. What are they like? Well, good for me. Yeah. Big. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This is a fraction of, you know. No, sir. We haven't been up there for ages. Yeah. It's a whole complete headlight now. <laughs> That's really cool. What's that? Is that up? Impressive. Yeah. 
Sorry. Yeah, they've got a big... No, it's not in there. It's not in there. They've got a big bear on the side. That's some oil in frame. No, they're... Uh, there's an old friend. Thank you. 
on the points. Big old lump, that one, isn't it? <laughs> it's super, isn't it? Mm. A real bucket. Hmm. Excellent. window as well. <laughs> Turns, but like the chains, the timing chains obviously falling down in there. Or has it? Oh well, whatever. Or maybe it's seized and the big end's totally shafted on it. <laughs> whatever, I'll sort it out. Yeah. I'll sort her out. That's what I, what I fear might have happened. Won't see in there. You won't see in there. Not without a torch. Smells like WD, that's a more of a squirty tongue, isn't it? Mm. Oh well, whatever it is, I'll sort it out. Yeah. 